Power armor has been a massive part of the Fallout series since the beginning, yet it continues to be less and less special as it seems Bethesda is continually adding more of it to the Fallout universe. I don't mind too much with the other models introduced in Fallout 76, as it seems at least Bethesda is somewhat careful how they go about adding them, and they still look pretty cool. But I do have a problem with this new power armor introduced with Steel Rain, the Hellcat power armor. There's absolutely no explanation for its existence, this seems extremely lazy, especially considering its unique stats. So I'm going to do a complete analysis of the power armor and in the process an analysis of the group that uses the power armor, Hellcat Company. The best place to start is with the stats. Here is a list of all the power armors in the game along with their stats ordered by damage resistance, and here's the list ordered by energy resistance and radiation resistance. This power armor is very unique. It is the second worst in the game in terms of energy and radiation resistance. Yet it's the third best in terms of damage resistance, but technically the best. Because each piece automatically comes with 2% ballistic damage reduction, totaling 12% with the full set of armor. This puts it just above T65 in terms of ballistic damage resistance. I don't know whether I want to include the percentage reduction as an actual characteristic, because the only way I could see that logically working is if it was deflection ability, but the Hellcat armor is much less curved than say the T65, but I guess I will include it, just for the purposes of this video. The extremely high damage resistance indicates the armor was a newly developed model before the war but its terrible energy and radiation resistance suggests there's more to the story than just experimental prototype before the war. Let's move on to the design. This armor is also extremely unique in its design. Out of all the armors in the game, the Hellcat power armor is by far the most geometric. The design makes much higher use of straight edges as opposed to the more curved designs of all the other power armor models. The Hellcat power armor also incorporates this hump design. The only other power armor to make use of this being the X-01, which was still a prototype before the war and was more or less top secret. The Hellcat armor also has a much larger breathing apparatus. It has tubes connecting to different points on the torso, what looks like oxygen storage on the back, and a massive tube around the helmet with small filters above it, as opposed to the normal gas mask type helmet seen on all other power armor models. The other notable differences from other power armor is the light being red by default, and another feature that is only present in the X-01, the light is projected from the visor. The last thing of interest on the Hellcat armor would be these gadgets on the sides of the chest piece. These look to me like motion sensors or maybe lights. The first option for this power armor I would like to propose is if it was amphibious assault armor. The more simple way of saying that being, it's designed to be used partly underwater. Now before anyone asks, no, its in-game breath limit underwater is the same as all other power armors. But it still seems this could be a likely purpose of the power armor. The large breathing apparatus is for breathing underwater for extended periods of time. The high kinetic resistance and low energy resistance could be because underwater energy weapons would be much less effective. So the design of the power armor was almost completely focused on kinetic resistance. Then the motion sensors or extra lights would be there because, well, it's hard to see underwater, and motion sensors could be very useful for stealth. I'm not sure about the red headlamp, maybe it's better for underwater use, or maybe it's harder for others to see, I don't know. This theory definitely would explain much of the design, and it might explain why we don't see this armor until now. This power armor could still just be a random prototype, we only see one person use it, whom we kill. Then at the end of the Brotherhood story, we are just given it. So the argument could be made that we just took it off the guy we killed, and any flaws in that explanation are just gameplay features. But if the power armor was actually an amphibious assault armor and was in full production, then most of the suits would be deployed overseas against China, 
Whereas many power armor suits were used as riot control on the American mainland, the Hellcat suit would be designed for more specialized military roles. Even though there would be a few instances of places it should be, you can suspend your disbelief just a little bit and the power armor does fit in the world. Although it doesn't explain where the Hellcat company got it. So I'm going to explore this new faction and maybe some other possibilities of the Hellcat power armor's origins will become clear. Barely anything is known about the Hellcat mercenary group. There's only a few pieces of information we can gather. The Hellcat mercenary group is obviously a mercenary company. The devs describe them as professional soldiers and they use military rankings. Sergeant Kit also has dog tags on his corpse. This would indicate a military origin, so maybe Hellcat company doesn't refer to a company as in a business but a military company. This would explain how they have the power armor, as it would have been assigned to their unit. Perhaps they specialized in amphibious operations, hence why they have this armor that seems to be used for that. It would also explain the branding, it's unusual for post-war businesses to put so much effort into their logo, even giving themselves a motto and putting it on their armor. This wouldn't be out of the ordinary if it was a military unit, they commonly have mottos and they would brand their equipment. This is the most likely explanation to all of this, but I would like to go over one other possibility that could be extremely interesting. I already proposed that the Hellcats weren't originally a business and were military, but what if they were both? What if the Hellcats were a private military company? The military aspects of the Hellcats would still hold up. We know that the US government did make use of mercenaries before the war, and I assume state governments would employ them to assist the military and police with riot control. It would also mean that the Hellcat power armor could be the first private military power armor. It might explain the completely different design to regular power armor models. The breathing system may actually be designed for protection against gas. All power armor models have filter systems, but perhaps because this power armor would be extensively used in these environments, the breathing system was improved. The red light is somewhat obvious, it's meant for intimidation purposes. The motion sensors I talked about before may be strobe lights to blind and disorientate rioters. Then the hump, like the X01, would be to protect the back of the head and neck. I personally wouldn't rule out the use of lasers from rioters, but it's not impossible to see why the focus would be on kinetic damage resistance. While I do think the amphibious use for the armor and the military origin of the Hellcats is more likely, it would be more interesting to have an actual private military company remnant and their power armor in the Fallout universe. But what do you think? Are the Hellcats ex-military? private military remnants, or just a post-war mercenary group? And is the Hellcat power armor designed for amphibious operations, riot control, or something else I didn't mention? I'd love to hear your suggestions in the comments, and always thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.